Hey everybody, welcome to the water. It's been a quite an adventure getting here. What you don't know is I've skunked three times in a row to get here. A bomb cyclone has gone off in California, so everything is blown. So we had to go find a tailwater where we knew the flows would be under control. But even though the flows are normal-ish, the water is really stained and brown. So we're gonna be fishing big stuff and fishing the edges, looking for you know fish taking refuge in the slower slack water. So let's see how it goes. Starting things off with an olive jig streamer. And the water is very stained. So I'm thinking big, big flies. We're also fishing the other side of the river. I've fished here many, many times, but I've never fished this side. So I don't really know where all the best holding water is. This may not be the best day to like really know, but we're gonna fish it and see what happens. I mean, like some of the normal stuff, like the upper sack, that's normally like, three to 400 CFS this time of year. Last I checked, it was 11,000. It's insanity. Got my heart racing. Oh, I just had one. I don't know, whatever these lighting conditions are, it's very hard to pick up the slider. Make sure I'm tight. Get a good cider angle. It's so nice when it's just lightly sprinkling. Last two times it's been torrential. That makes it very difficult. I think I might tie on a second jig streamer. Maybe a thin mint like Jeremy caught one on, but just give them two things to see, you know? This water is really off color. There's maybe like six to nine inches of visibility. Should also point out, last time I here, I hooked a whole bunch of fish on jig streamers, but it was on kind of a terrible hook, so. I've got the Foley Mill 5130s and I've got some new hooks of my own. And that's what I'm fishing now is my own hook. I just want to see, it's got a bit of a wider gap. I think the wire is finer than my last hook. Oh, I know it is. But I think on doing a little more research and just looking at the hooks, I think that my problem was the hook gap. Is there, pretty short for jig hooks and streamers. So like the head of the fly was really blocking the gap. There's one. Oh, darn it. Really soft water, like by the grass. Well. Streamer gang. At least I connected with something. That feels good. Uh, it's been three grueling trips since I've had a bite. Like even a bite. Admittedly, the hook set on that fish was terrible. Pretty rusty. I was just in shock. Wasn't sure what was going on. Just for giggles, mix things up. I'm gonna add a thin mint, do a dual, dual streamer setup. All right, it's running a double jig streamer rig. Got a thin mint up on the dropper and a black jig streamer down on the, the point. This fish was right on the margins here, so I gotta back up so I can get in here. You cast at just the right angle, it's so hard to pick up the cider. It's just really glary, flat light against the light colored water, it's not easy.
can't tell you what kind of a joy it is to stand on something flat in this river. Found a little gravel under here that's flat. See if I can land this thing. Oh, I'm so rusty. Yes. Sweet. Right on the margins. It's not big. It's 13 inches. Those kinglets we're hearing. Okay, <laughs> found a spot. This one's a little better. Oh, he came off. Had him on the Thin Mint also. Darn it. He was alligatoring on me. There's one. He's not thrilled to be being caught. Nice. Ten mint. I've never fished this section from this side. This is awesome. We, we need to definitely come back here and fish this when the conditions are normal. Because this is like fishy AF. Fish thrash when they get on a streamer. It's way different than a nymph. Well. That was on the uh, the jig streamer. Well, they're both jig streamers, but that was on the olive one. The back to olive. Seems to be about 50-50, thin mint and the olive. Oh, there's one. Got one on the swing. Let's see if I can keep him on. <coughs> Got one on the swing! <laughs> ah. Slip off. Nice, this is a beautiful fish. He's so spotted up. Wow. Huh. Look at this guy. Well, it's a female. 15 inch here, biggest fish right here. Super cool. Got that one on the olive streamer. On the street, swing too, no less. I don't want to hear anybody telling me to strip set today. Nobody's gonna tell me that because I strip setted and she got to the net. <laughs> that was cool though. She was pretty snaky though, but she had lots of spots on her. She kind of looked like a, a Hat Creek fish.
actually pretty happy. My hooks seem to be connecting. I mean, I lost a couple in the beginning, but I think I've got my game dialed in. These hooks are great. Oh yeah. Oh darn. That was a good one. Uh, I thought I had him. That was a good fish too. I've gotten a few on the margins. Oops, I'm not really in the water here. But by and far, most of them have been in some moving water. Just around structure, kind of like where they normally are here, to be honest. You know, I changed things up a little bit. I've got a red leech up on the dropper and the black streamer still down the point. Figured it's see if they're interested in any color. I'm just gonna fish my way back to the car. We're gonna go eat, eat some lunch. There we go. Don't come off. It's really dark. Took the leech. Oh, that's a good fish. Yes. There we go. Yeah, red leech, baby. Wow, what a beautiful fish. All right, I can go home now. Red leech, baby. Nice. Actually never fished this in a river before. Sweet. Does it feel like they've been biting more the sun came out? I know, but... Maybe there's just a rock right here I keep thumping. Jeez. Oh. Oh. Jeez. Fat male took the black streamer. Dang. Hey, Jeremy.
Hey everybody, I hope everybody's faring well with all these storms on the west coast. It's just absolutely slammed out here. It's really hard to go fishing when all the rivers are completely blown and slammed. I mean, it's incredible right now. But if you know where to look, there are still some tailwaters that are fishable. There's lakes that still need to be filled up, so they're not releasing extra water for this heavy rain flow. They're letting the lakes fill up. So if you look at tailwaters and try to fish close to the dams, there are chances you can find it somewhere to go fishing. So that's exactly what we did. We found a tailwater where the flows were decent. We could get there physically, like some of the roads are all snowed in right now or just flooding and it's just nuts out there. So we found one we could get to, the flows were good and it was still muddy. So we brought streamers and we hammered the water with those hoping that that would turn on a fish or two, uh, you know, maybe in the sides. And it turned out that they were everywhere they normally were and they were still eating pretty much like normal. I presented the streamers pretty much any which way. I fished upstream most of the time. I'd fish across, strip back to me, or I'd fish across and let it swing down and then I'd strip it back. All three methods work. We got fish in all kinds of water. I got them in the, the margins over on the side, you know, the soft water where, you know, they're taking refuge out of the main current. They were in pocket water in and around rocks and they were even in swift runs you know, below big pools. They didn't seem to have any problems, you know, seeing the flies or feeling them with their lateral lines. I'm not sure which way they're, you know, finding food in these kind of conditions, but uh, I was definitely able to hook up and get some really nice fish back to the net. Uh, ironically, you may have noticed at the end of the video, there were a couple young guys that were fishing on the opposite side and they were nymphing and they were still landing fish just like we were on streamers. So take that as it may, streamers and nymphs were both working that day, although I stuck to streamers the whole day. Now this has been a long time coming. I haven't had any streamers in the shop for a long time because I didn't really feel like I had any of my own unique tastes yet. And so I've been working on that. Uh, it's very difficult because there's so much similarity between many of the streamers out there. There's small changes that can make big difference on sink rates or how much action it has from pulsing or articulation. So basically this jig streamer, I'm riffing off of Troutfly's Jig Sculpzilla, and I'm also insp taking inspiration from like a traditional squirrel leech where you basically got a fur collar for the head and a, and a zonker for a tail. So differing from the Jig Sculpzilla, I've got a different color body. Um, I've got a much bigger head and I've also got a soft tackle on top of that just to sort of give it a little more action in the water, hoping that soft tackle will stand up more when you let off between strips, hoping it will pulse more. It'll either act like the, the gills on a sculpin or just the pectoral fins on a bait fish. They flutter out when they hit the brakes uh, just to sort of balance themselves in the water. So that fly and the others, the Thin Mint, which is a bugger variation with a cool three colored tail, really slim body. It's a small hook, like a size 12, or that was a size 10. And then I've got my uh, squirrel leeches, which I fished in lakes for a long time, but I just haven't really talked about it. Uh, that works really well <laughs> in the river as well. So. Uh, I got all three of those streamers up in the shop, and as always, that's the best way to support me and the channel. Go in there and pick some up for yourselves. The rivers on the West Coasters forecast has continued to be blown out for some time, so if you can get to some water, definitely consider taking some streamers so that you can have you know, a better chance of providing something big, dark profile that the fish will see and, and want to eat. I'd love to hear from you guys, though. Are you finding any water that you can fish close to home? I know with everything blown, it's just insane right now. And, I'm thankful for the water, but I'm also not a fan of the flooding and the destruction to people's homes and property. Uh, it's unfortunately a fine line between having water and damaging public property. But uh, let me know, are you guys finding any tailwaters near your home? And uh, let me know down in the comments if you're getting out and getting any fish to the net. I'd love to hear about it. Until next time, everybody, I'll see you on the water and Godspeed.